going to probably just write it as um, you guys have been reading about reading Jeff's columns about collaboration. Um, this is a little bit of his background. This is a little bit about what he does with his company. And maybe start out with, you know, this year when we kick off scavenger hunts, it's going to be this about doing good. And we've brought Jeff, who's going to, you know, his background is in nonprofit, and he does this fabulous job with his new company, with his company. And this is what he's going to do with the scavenger hunt. And that's, you know, yeah. short attention span. Absolutely. Yeah, people don't, don't have yeah. patience. Before, I mean, I don't know, I know Jen seems to want to try to keep mostly under wraps the specifics of what I'm going to do that night, I think. Okay, so yeah, uh, I'll think. clear it with just, her. Just just talk with her. I, I don't know how much of a reveal she wants, um, so if you ask her, that'd be great. So yeah. what is the plan? So the plan, the plan is that we're going to do a little bit of that miniature nugget of the song team experience okay. uh, like the TEDx kind of thing where for about 20 minutes which I don't remember I remember seeing it but my, right. my brain is a sieve so, so. so we're gonna write what essentially feels like a jingle about Na about Nashville <laughs> a jingle about Hollywood oh um, very cool um, so instead of writing out this whole song around the hook that we might have been uh, coming into a program or event already written we're, we're not going to write a whole song. We're going to write that 30 seconds you would hear on a commercial. Okay, great. Um, and it's going to focus on the good in Hollywood. Okay. Which is the hook. Um, so I know in my mind, musically, where I'd like this to go a little okay. bit. And narratively, I know where I'd like it to start. It's going to be up to the audience as to where it goes the rest of the Very way. Very fun. And We'll take about 20 minutes, is my understanding, and um, there's going to be another gentleman up on stage who I hear is a fabulous improvisational piano player. He'll okay. be joining me. Um, we might have someone help us sort of uh, with percussion. Um, at TEDx, we divided half the room into the non-existent percussion section, so they became the percussion right, right. section, okay, which that. was part of the most, that probably one of the fun. most fun parts. So I could see us doing something like that. Um, because if we don't have drums, it would be nice to have a right, right, right. You know, um, and uh, and and we're just we're just gonna write the jingle that Hollywood's never had, and, and hopefully everyone's gonna have a blast. And I am seeking input, starting with this month's column. Okay. Um, uh, if any, you know, we'll see if there's seven people reading me or not. Um, but but I'm asking for people to email me words or phrases that describe Hollywood to them. Okay. That night, we're going to have a couple of runners in the room with handheld microphones, um, and we'll seek feedback that night from the audience. And any words or phrases that come out of the audience that night through a teleprompter operator or a laptop yeah. will be shot up onto a screen behind Very you. Very fun. And so for a few minutes, we're going to brainstorm with the audience. We're going to come up with uh, the melody that is loosely formed in my head with the help of some other musicians. and. Um, then we're going to write this thing like speed dating. It's going to be speed songwriting, speed jingle writing. Oh, very Yeah, nice. And then we'll have a group performance at the end. And, uh, so it's going to be, Excellent. I think it's going to be frenetic and fun. And it's going to be collaborative. And one of my new favorite words is instead of just experience, it's also going to be a little disruptive. So yeah, that's yeah. a big word now. Yeah. Trying to get all the buzzwords in there. All the buzzwords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and, you know, the hunt is appealing to me it, it, when Jen approached me about it, um, because by nature most most successful hunts are very collaborative in nature. They bring teams of people together, whether they're people who know each other from the workplace or church or the bowling league. Um, uh, but sometimes they also bring strangers together, so it, it allows people to see things in a new light. It allows them to see things through someone else's eyes. Um, it allows them sometimes on the spot to figure out, well, what are you good at? Oh, right. you're good at research. Okay, you know. Or you, or you, or, or you're, uh, you know, you're very insightful about seeing things that no one else sees. You know, you're always observing things that everyone else misses. So we need to make sure you're our eyes. You know, right. and um, so to me, the hunt is very much about collaboration and team and uh, and open mindedness, and that's what the song team does. Excellent. Yeah. So that'll be fun. 
So, so you brought your guitar tonight. What do you want to do? Um, you know, I'd like to share with you uh, a chorus to a song that's not been written other than the chorus. Okay. Uh, it's a new song called All Boats Rise. Um, and with the help of one or two other people, I'm trying to come up with a worthwhile rest of the song. But the chorus um, is mostly done. And it really is about, you know, helping each other out. And when we help each other out, everyone's lives improve. Okay. So, see if I can find the right key for this. I think I should learn to play guitar again. It was, I played guitar when I was younger and I gave it up to grow, to grow my nails. And now my nails don't get long anyway, so. Some people with the style of guitar they play like to have one or two long nails because they use them instead of picks. Yeah. That's not me, I can't do that. I just. I can do the, uh, the chords. All boats rise when you help a brother. All boats rise when you lend a hand. All boats rise when you love each other. All boats rise when you make a stand. Can we reach out to one another? Can we put differences aside? We can make a better. So that is the chorus to a song that's not yet complete. Um, okay. But uh, but I'm very excited about it because well, I'm, 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 it's, it's what you're all about. These days, to me, um, almost everything that I write that's that's not for the song team. If it's yeah. a song that gets completed, and especially if it's a song that gets recorded, um, it's usually a purpose-driven song. Very nice. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm getting ready to retire. Partially, my friends say, "What are you going to retire from?" I just do five different jobs because <laughs> maybe I'll cut down. Cut down to two. two. Yeah, but um, you got to stay engaged and busy, you know, yeah. I mean, to a to a degree. I want to do more art. I want to do more volunteer work. So it's um, it's becoming more and more. I see, you know, how much it takes a team. It really does. And it's so cliche, but it's so true. And it's not just two, you know. I've read a lot of leadership books. So there's a there's a book called The One Minute Millionaire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you ever read that? It was written as bits and pieces. Yeah. You know, it's written like as a novel on one side of the page, and as sort of a textbook on the other side of the page. They face each other. But one thing that I always re I recall from that is they talked about four people, four types of people are needed for a team. Because you have an idea person, mm -hmm. but the idea person has no idea about execution. Right. They just keep spewing out ideas. Yep. And then you have a um, the the strategist who's going to take that idea and figure out how to make it happen. Right. But the people, the the two that you don't think about, so you have your you know Wozniak and Jobs, right? Mm -hmm. But the two, the next, the next ones are the worker bees who get out there and actually do the work. Yeah. And the final one that nobody gives the recognition to is the naysayer. They're the ones who are going to tell you why it's not going to work. And right. You want to just smack them upside you need the head, them. but you need them because they're going to tell you the problems before they happen. These are the roadblocks you may hit. Yeah, and yeah. those you know, nobody wants to listen to them. But they can save you a lot of grief sure. and a lot of money down the road. Yeah. Because they're going to go, this is what's not going to work. Yeah, those are all essential pieces. Absolutely. I heard, um, uh, I, 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 you know, there's a book out there, like Life and Philosophy According to Seinfeld. Um, I, I've heard a couple of folks talk about the Seinfeld ensemble and, and compare the various members of the ensemble as wacky as they were, mm -hmm. to you know the kind of folks you need on certain teams. The one that always jumped out at me was Kramer. Mm -hmm. um, Kramer was the wacky idea guy, right? Who was so far out on left field. Just keeps spewing them out. Do you know? I don't know if you were a Seinfeld fan at all. I'm no. not. Okay, well there there was a fictional company in one of the Seinfeld episodes. Well, many of the Seinfeld yeah. episodes that Kramer and with and a little bit of help from George Costanza 
they had something called Vandalay Industries. Okay, I remember. It was that. fake. It was out of yeah. like one of their apartments. Uh, it was before you could do all your work out of your apartment. But um, I ran across a Vandalay Industries down here in Florida recently. Bizarre. <laughs> so strange. Uh, yeah. Uh, one of the head writers for Seinfeld was a childhood friend of mine. Yeah. And so I think that's why I didn't like the show because it just was my childhood. Yeah. And he kept kicking out friends of friends' names, yeah. Right. So we always laughed. And he's he's pretty well he also wrote all the Borak movies. Really? How interesting. And uh, and whenever anyone goes out to LA and they call him, he's really gracious. He'll invite them out to sets of what nice. he's working on, yeah. That's great. Well, is there anything else you need to ask or want to ask? Uh, what? Tell me a little, because I'm not really up on what's going on with the with the scavenger hunt. Um, the the whole search look, looking for good is that a search for good? Was I think it? we're calling it. Um, and check with Jen on this, yeah. but I, I think we're calling it the hunt for good. The hunt for good. Right. What? Or the what do you know? I think it is hunt for good because they want to use the word hunt. What do you know about how that's going to play out? Um, again, I would defer to. Jen, we've been brainstorming a little bit on it. I, you know, I, I do know that we, it feels like we want to have a stronger nonprofit component than she has in the past okay. as far as missions that bring attention to nonprofits and corporate sponsors that adopt nonprofits. Yeah. And I know that some of that has existed in the past, but, but what she and I have talked about, and of course, she's the one pulling yeah. all the strings yeah. behind the scenes right now. She's the wizard. Yeah. Um, but, um, but we did talk about could, could that component be more purposeful and more uh, embedded in it this year. Okay. And I think that's where the, the hunt for good came from. Uh, on that yeah. Tomorrow. You know, we talked very loosely about um, if this corporate client or this, co or this corporate sponsor or this or that one, like I know we're, we're, we're really counting on Yellow Cab mm -hmm. um, being a key sponsor. And if they s jump in, which she thinks they will. I had suggested to her because they're trying to raise their profile to compete with Uber and yeah, Lyft. Yeah. You know, why don't we make it? You probably can't make it mandatory, but darn close. If if they will create a package and a, and a barcode um, that people participating in the hunt basically have to take the cab all over town uh. Um, uh, to go to all these different missions, then all of a sudden Yellow Cab has this amazing promotional opportunity as a sponsor here to be seen all over town doing this. Thing. Yeah. And and even if one or two points like the um, the kickoff event and maybe um, there's maybe if there's a big concluding event, all of a sudden someone because you're going to shoot video of this yeah, stuff. Yeah. If, how great a promotional piece for them as a sponsor yeah. if you know all of a sudden 20 yellow cabs pull up, you know all as part of the mission and people get out of the cars like clowns in the circus, you yeah. know like and they're all part of this thing. So. I, I think that's where we're headed with it to try to make it something that is um, very very fun like it's always been but has a little bit more of, of, of a altruistic purpose as well. Yeah, yeah. good idea. There's yeah. a lot of need in this town. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. There's a lot of everywhere. everywhere. There's a lot. That's why. That's why I started. You know, that's yeah. the impetus behind that new song I just shared part of with. I, I, yeah. If everybody, if everybody who watched a lot of TV would give up an hour or two or three of TV a week do and something. do something else and do it smart. Find something they like and do it smart. Lots of different, I mean, there's so many, there's millions of great volunteers in this country, you volunteer, um, but there's a lot of people who spend a lot of time in watching reality TV too. Crazy, that, that's right? some, there's some people power there that could be harnessed. Amazing. You know, um, and so uh, I, I when I ran Big Dog Ranch as their director of operations, re restarting, hitting the reset button on their volunteer program and making it more strategic and purposeful was a big part of what I was proud of helping them improve. Um, and then when we started Redemption Song Rescue, the YouTube friends and I, after that, which combined addiction recovery for young men with dog rescue, oh, and, wow. so that we could take young men in need and make taking care of the animals, as well as the facility, part of their recovery process. Again, everything. Yeah. We were a shoestring organization, so every everyone who helped us that weren't the guys themselves were volunteers from the community, and they were volunteers sometimes from other recovery houses who were just like, we want to send a group of twenty people out, um, give them some hammer and nails, like you know. So yeah, I um, 
I have to be attached to something like that. It's so ingrained in my blood that if I'm not if I'm not helping if I'm not a part of helping something move forward at almost all times, I feel a little empty. I agree. Um, and that may. Yes. And you have to find the thing that touches your heart. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I've what I've been working on lately, among my other things. You know, there's always something. You, my sister, who lived down here long before, she moved down right around the time of Hurricane Andrew. Mm -hmm. And um, so she became, she kind of made it her career. She, she built a company that does silent auctions for nonprofits. So she has a very little narrow What's her scope. name? Cindy Eisen. Does she have a partner or is it just her? It's, it's just her. I okay. Know. I knew, I knew another, I knew a sister team that did that out like uh, in Wellington up in the Lots of Ashy Way. No, she in, she lives in Park Ed, Pembroke Pines. So okay. She does a lot of stuff around Fort Lauderdale. And through that, she worked for um, she worked for uh, Hands On Broward for a while. Nice, Belzga Broward. And so she met people, and through that, we met a lot of. So well, and how in Florida, that's what people do for social life. New York, not so much. Right. But here, it's like what organizations you work with. And so we made a lot of friends. Um, when I first moved to Florida. My first Florida friend was a girl named Sabrina Cohen, who was a quadriplegic. She was in a car accident when she was 13. She lied to her parents. She said, I'm going out with friends. She got in a car with boys she didn't know. They went drag racing. They wrapped themselves around a tree. Everybody else walked away. She was in the back seat in the middle without a seatbelt. Mm. Never walked again. So she was one of my first, I think really my first Florida friend, and now she's 40. Yeah. She was 27 when I met her, and she's blossomed into a lovely young lady. And I met her at Landmark, and her project in the Self-Expression and Leadership Program, uh, she started doing things for stem cell research, and that became a foundation that's now, she's in, she just won something last week, she was on TV. Uh, through Channel 10, uh, an Adult Achievement Award, and big, I mean, she's doing big, big stuff. And here's a girl, now what she does is she's begun an adaptive beach for people who couldn't otherwise get to the beach. I read a piece on her, was that your piece? No, I read not a piece. In the pa I didn't do it because the cheese had been in my apparel. I read a piece on her sometime in the last year, Dan. Oh, there. yeah. She's and, it, all and, and, and it showed a, there was one of the beaches where these um, uh, locking pieces yeah, had the been. The Moby Mats. Yes. So, what we do, and that's where I was today, uh, we do twice a month in Miami, and we have had thousands of people come out. People who have never been in the ocean before. People in their fifties who have never been to the beach before because there's no way for them to do it. Right. Now what we do is we have twice a month big beach parties. We put out mats and tents and food and music and people come and they dance and we have Reiki. I do arts and crafts. So it's I run great. Arts and crafts what a great program. These people, their lives are so enriched at the beach. They and never. You don't even think. I mean, we have people and their families because if you're in a wheelchair, you can can't go. Okay, family, let's go to the beach today. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so, and and for me, when, when Christopher Reeve, like I lived in New York, okay, the two guys that used to see all the time were John Kennedy Jr. and Christopher Reeve. Yeah. I, you'd, I'd go to a restaurant, they'd be at the next table. I'd work in Barney's, they'd come through the store. I'd go skiing in Vermont, they'd come walking in the ski lodge. You know, they were just all over the place. And, and I took their... Well, you know, John, dad, John John's death and, mm. and um, Christopher Reeve's injury and subsequent death, very personal. Right. And 